But hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyla, and as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be telling you guys how I edit my videos. I think this is part four in my YouTuber series. Part one was video ideas, part two was starting your channel, part three was thumbnails and how I plan my videos. Now I'm gonna be doing how I edit my videos. I think this is the last part of my YouTuber series, but if you guys have any other questions or want me to cover any other questions that you guys may have for YouTube, that you can leave those ideas in the comment section and I will try to do them during the summer but yeah this video is probably gonna be really really long and let's go ahead and just get started on into it so the first thing that I want to talk about is what I use to both edit and film my videos so always in my description box I tell you guys what I do use to film and edit my videos but right now I'm using the Canon M50 to film my videos I bought this camera last summer during quarantine it was $600 whenever I bought it off of Amazon I think the price has gone up to $700 but honestly Honestly, I love this camera so 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 much. I like it a lot better than the G7X or any other camera that I've had but I love this camera and the tripod that I use is a, a BZI Ni 60. I don't really know but I'll put the thing of like what it is on the screen right now but yeah that is what I use. I used to have a mini tripod. I don't have one anymore. I actually need to buy a new one and then to edit my videos I do use Final Cut Pro. I have used iMovie before. I know that there's a bunch of videos on how to edit really good videos on iMovie but I only had an iMovie for about seven months and then I got Final Cut for my birthday and I've been using Final Cut for about seven, eight months now too. I have a MacBook Air that I use to edit my videos, but yeah, I also have, let's see, it's over here. I also have this thing that I use. It is a two terabyte hard drive from Easy Store. I got this from Best Buy and then to plug it into my laptop, I have this little dongle type piece thing right here. I have two of these, one for my card reader and one for for my hard drive but that is all like the materials I use for my videos but now I'm going to talk about the editing process from beginning to end of how I edit my videos so the first step that you have to do is obviously import your clips and then what I do is I'll add the clips into the timeline so once you open up Final Cut you have like your timeline at the bottom I will add my clips into my timeline I do one clip at a time whenever it comes to rough cutting it just because it's a lot easier for me if I do one clip at a time instead of adding all of my clips from that video Video. It just takes away so much anxiety. So while I'm adding the clips in, I do the rough cut of the whole video first. So I cut up exactly what I want into the video. I'll leave out any like blanks inside the video where it's just like dead silence just because that's awkward. And I'll also like speed up the video whenever it's needed. I'll get to my talky point, talky, talking points. But this is the longest part of the video and it is honestly the most annoying, the slowest part. I don't like doing the rough cut, but I know that once I am done with the rough cut the editing process just gets a lot better and it's a lot more fun but while I'm doing the rough cut I will add little markers on to exactly what I want at certain points of the video so for example if there's something that I want to text like a talking point I will click M and it'll leave a marker so I know like hey I want to come back to this spot so I can do this to it or whatever it is and it really does help a lot but after I do the rough cut I will go back and lay over the other clips if needed I had like video clips to lay over over while I'm talking, if I wanted to do text for specific things, funny edits, funny text, zoom ins, or like any other kind of stuff. And then after I do all of like my fun edits, I'll add in the music and then I'll go back and watch the video through and then I'm done editing my video. But that is like the whole entire process of me editing my video. Just basically it's add your videos in, do the rough cut, then the fun stuff, music, and then you're finished. Even though it doesn't sound like a lot, it is so much. It takes me two to three days to edit a whole video. Sometimes I can get a video done in one day but I prefer not to. I like to get my whole entire rough cut done in one day and then I like to do most of all like the fun edits the next day and then I'll either finish on the second day if I really want to or sometimes I will do all like the fun edits then go back on the third day watch it through and fix anything else. That is pretty much my editing process but now we're gonna get into kind of what you guys probably clicked on this video for is basically how I do my video effects, sound effects, transitions, text, the film that 
that is over my video background music and just all that kind of fun stuff okay so the first thing that we're going to be talking about are the video effects that i use so the ones that i like to use the most are bad tv mask basically is whenever i put myself in a little corner and i'll show you guys how i do that i like to do the underwater effect earthquake camcorder frame and here which here is for green screens so i'm gonna get into how i do the mask thing first okay so i'm gonna show you guys how i do my mask for my videos so i have this video right here i'm just going to load in a random video like let's use my outro or whatever it is basically what i'm gonna do is i click this little button right here which has all of the effects and i will click on the mask thing and i usually use this shape one and i will just drag it on top of there and it does this and I will go on this side and change the radius and that kind of stuff and then right here I will go to crop actually no it's not crop transform I'll click transform and I will just size it down and put it into the corner and yeah that's pretty much what mask is and how I use that effect but yeah those are most of all the video effects that I use I'll be getting into some more a little bit later that I'll show you guys how exactly I got those but yeah so the next one that I want to talk about are transitions. So the regular transitions that, that I use that you guys see a lot more are the white screen plus camera click to sound effect with it, which is this one. Sometimes I'll also do the sliding transition with swoosh to sound effect, which is this one. I'll do the bad TV transition, which is this one right here, which is the one that I do like to use a lot. So, so basically how I do that one is I will cut off a little part right here and then also a little part right there. Now go into the stylize and just bring the bad TV effect over where I cut it and it just kind of like transitions like that but those are the transitions that i use and now we're going to get into sound effects so all of the sound effects that i use are camera click 2 switch to computer mouse golf hit and bottle cork those are the ones that i do use the most out of all of them sometimes i'll add in other sound effects but those are the ones i use the most i mainly use camera click for that white screen transition thing switch to for the transition computer mouse whenever a text pops up i'll use that one golf hit sometimes for the sliding transition and then bottle cork sometimes for the white screen it just depends but I mainly use camera click to switch to and computer mouse the most now I'm going to show you guys how I do the text that you guys will see in the corner sometimes and in general all of my text so I go into the text thing titles and I'll scroll down until I see a basic title and just drag it into my timeline right here so I click it and then I'll go over here here and let's say like taking off my makeup and I don't like using capitals I don't know why I usually use Helvetica and the bold oblique one and this is the one that I've stuck to this is the one that I like the most I've tried using other ones but this is the one that I just like it stuck with me and I really like it and basically what I'll do is I'll scroll down and I will show face and I will change the color on that to like let's use pink as the fill and then outline I will change that color to like a darker pink so i'll go to the one like above it or something and then i'll build the width up put the blur up as well and then the opacity of the text i will turn down sometimes i'll leave it like this but most of the time i won't and what i will do to make it a little bit more like interesting i'll add the bad tv effect over the text as well just to give it a little bit more like that i don't know it's just more fun to do it that way and sometimes the other text that i will use as well is the underwater effect and then I'll also use the earthquake effect and then after I do all of that just make my text and everything then I'll put the computer mouse click to where it like lines up with the text so whenever the text pops up you hear that sound and everything and it like lets people know like hey something popped up on the screen you should look at it now I'm gonna get into the main question that I've been getting asked a lot more is how I do my filters I researched this so 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 much like how do people do this I learned this mainly from Hannah 
Anna Mott. She showed how she did her filter and I really liked it. So I basically used hers. But I got the adjustment layer, which is what you like lay over your video to like put the filter on. I'll show you guys in just a second from Selfie. I will leave the link for that adjustment layer down in the description box below so you guys can go and get it. It is 100% free and all you have to do is download it and you need to watch the video on how to exactly get it and everything. It took me a little bit, but you guys got it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that real quick. So, so basically once you get the adjustment layer, you should have a little adjustment layer under your titles and I will bring in the long one and you will have to like adjust it to go over your entire video, but it's not that hard at all. What I'll do is I'll click on it and put the color board over the video. Then what you're gonna do is click on this little icon up here and you will be adjusting the master shadows, midtones, and highlights for this part right here. I just use the percentages and that kind of stuff to go along with it and I'll just drag this everywhere and everything, but I'm going to lay over. So I'm gonna lay over my little filter to show you guys exactly what I use and so I can also remind myself like what exactly I even do. So this is what my color board looks like. My master is at 110 degrees at negative 22%. My shadows is at 180 degrees at 43%. Mid tone 39 degrees, 53%. And my highlights are at 300 degrees at negative 15%. So basically, master is in green, shadows is in this blue cyan, midtones is in orange, and highlights are in pink, which gives it this filter right here. I will say I mainly do keep it at these numbers. I don't think I changed this for my last two videos, but sometimes I will need to adjust specific clips just so it doesn't look too crazy or anything. And yeah, you can take these numbers, use it as you please. So there you go. But that that is how I do my filters and now I'm gonna get into the other selfie effects that I use. These could also go under transitions and video effects but I thought they deserve their own little section just because I do have a couple of them like I have about five of them and by the way I'm gonna have all these linked in the description box. These ones are all the free ones that you do not have to pay for so yeah I'll be linking these ones down below but I have glitch titles, the 8 millimeter film effect, animated letterbox which is just the two black bars just to make it look like this more cinematic the RN VHS effect, the light leak transition, which I have not used. And then I also have the VHS transition. But yeah, those are the other effects that I use that are not in Final Cut that I download to put in Final Cut. Again, these ones will be linked inside the description box so you guys can go get them for yourselves. Now we are gonna get into where I get my background music from. So I get all of my music from hellothematic.com. So here you go, hellothematic.com. This is what I use to get all of my background music. A bunch of other YouTubers also use this to get their background music from and you can definitely tell if you just go down into the description box and they always have it linked because that is what you're supposed to do. The biggest thing about using this website is you must link all of the music that you use in the description box. So usually how I find my music is going to other people's description boxes, seeing what music they use or I'll go into the browse music tab right here and I will just listen to a bunch of music. At least once a month, I'll spend like one night for like an hour or two just getting new background music because after a month, I'm kind of bored of the background music that I have and I'm ready for something different. But all you have to do is you go into your downloads whenever you're doing your description box of your videos and you literally just click this YouTube button and it's copied and then you just paste it. These are all the ones that I have pretty much. I have pages upon pages, literally 23 pages of the music. I would also check for you export a video, go Go into the view expired songs to know if any of the music that you're using is expired. But yeah, I would always check this little section just so you don't get copyrighted or anything. But yeah, but yeah, that is where I get all of my music from. But that's pretty much how I edit my videos. As I said, I do the rough cut first and then I'll go back and do all of the fun little kind of stuff. To be honest, at least for me, you can teach somebody all these tricks and stuff for video editing. But to me, what makes somebody's video editing like amazing is the fact that they'll just sit there and experiment with different editing styles and just see what they like exactly. And that is what I think make YouTubers so unique and different, not only our personalities, but also the way that we edit. But yeah, 
yeah, I can stay here all day long, show you guys what I do and how I edit my videos and all that kind of stuff, but you just need to experiment with what you are given and just see exactly what your style of editing is. But yeah, I really hope that you guys do enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe right down below. My camera is about to die, I see it dying. But yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.